welcome to another edition of our video, video art article series from PoolHallBusinessPlan.com. My name is Brad Turner. Uh, in this uh, video, we're going to talk about the food menu and how we deliver um, a food program to our customers using a very cost-effective uh, solution based on space, based on the equipment we use, and based on um, the amount of manpower to operate it. Uh, food represents about 5%, 5 to 7% of total sales. Again, not huge, and admittedly, I'm leaving money on the table. In hindsight, I would have, I should have built out a bigger area in anticipation of the growth of the business. Uh, right now, food is a high growth area for me, and I have to make the decision to do additional uh, modifications to the floor plan to bring in uh, a bigger cooking area. Uh, but the point is, if you've got a limited budget, if your zoning limits you on what you can do, uh, if there's exclusions in your lease, uh, I'm going to talk to you about how you can put together a fairly effective food program with uh, a, a relatively small budget. Okay, So at a high level, here is the Hub Billiard Club right here. Uh, we have it uh, uh, located at 4060 Austin Boulevard. It's about 5,500 square feet uh, each floor. There's two floors, so we've got about 11,000 square feet altogether. I'm going to talk just about the first floor in this video. Uh, this is our parking lot. This is Carolina Avenue, small side street. And then the Austin Boulevard here is the main through affair, right? So this is the front of the building, the side, the back. Now, when you walk into the hub, this is that awning. This is the front of the building. You can go upstairs to the left to the second floor musical area. Um, when I say musical, uh, it's our private party room, live music venue upstairs. But what I want to focus on is on the main floor you come through, we've got on the left a small display for cues. Pro, we call it our pro shop area. So there's cues on display, dart supplies. Then we have the ball control. Uh, also acts as a second terminal for... Uh, um, our bartenders and waitresses and then we got our bar and what we call our kitchen or food area so it's continuous so that the bartender can um, serve patrons get to the floor and still cook food if he needs to be uh, so really our food prep is just this area here okay very small probably no more than about uh, 10 oh I would probably say about uh, six feet by six feet now, before we jump into what it looks like in pictures, let's talk about the menu that we have. Our menu is essentially a one-page menu. Uh, we have uh, sassy sautéed chicken wings, uh, eight pieces for seven bucks. We offer french fries, uh, quesadilla rolls, chicken fingers, uh, personal pizzas, corn dogs, chips and salsa, uh, french fries, uh, barbecue chicken sandwiches, southwest chicken sandwich, hot dogs. Uh, the warm pretzels, real simple. Uh, we do those in the microwave, but uh, at about 20 cents per pretzel cost, three bucks, this uh, this has turned out to be pretty popular. Um, we also have a relationship with a local pizzeria where if a table is real hungry, there's four, five, six people at a table, and they want something a little more substantial, they can order in a regular or pepperoni pizza. Now here in Long Island, I get those delivered, a regular pizza for $10, so two, three bucks for tip, and uh, you know I make about $7 on a pie. Uh, not the best margins in the world, but the fact that I don't have to order anything, keep anything, cook anything, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, the pepperoni costs us about $12, uh, again with three buck tip, um, you know, three, four dollar tip. Uh, we make about 10 bucks so seven to ten bucks a pie and again it's all about convenience and not having to invest in any money up front in terms of stock and the staff loves it because they don't have to do any cooking right so my cooking is done by my bartenders and my waitresses um, and when it's you know during the day or during a weeknight where I've only got one person on staff uh, they can do it all themselves right so every every staff member is a is a cook so to speak okay so when you take a look at this area right here if you're standing right in front of it 
looking to the left, this is what you would see. So here's the deli counter that you see right here. And then uh, we have a half, what's called a half size CADCO convection oven. These things run about $1,000. You can get them in 110 and 220 volt models. Uh, I would recommend the 220 volt. It heats up faster. Uh, simple microwave for about 100 bucks from your local appliance store. This is a warming tray that we picked up at a, a restaurant supply place. You pick those up for a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, in preparation for the evening, what we'll do is we'll pre-cook uh, some wings or some chicken tenders and pop them in here in the warming tray, sort of like, you know, kind of what you see at any fast food place, and that way they're ready to go. This is my ice machine, coffee, small hand sink, okay, and then the shelf for, you know, snacks, um, potato chips, that sort of thing, right? So out of here, we can generate quite a bit of food, and what I found is, you know, uh, being able to have this simple pub grub combined with uh, our relationships with local pizzerias, local delis, uh, and other restaurants. You know, we've got a pretty good menu that if we have a large party, we can work on putting together a catering program. So I can do everything from, you know, delivering pizzas right through to um, offering heroes and sides uh, up to full hot buffets, be it Italian barbecue, Mexican, whatever, whatever people are interested in. Okay, so that gives you a sense there. What I like about this solution is it's very simple and it's very easy. Uh, you can, like I said, probably for, uh, you know, 2,500 bucks for a ice machine, coffee maker for five, six, industrial coffee maker for five, 600 bucks, two, 300 bucks for a warmer, some trays, uh, some prep tables, another thousand bucks for an oven, uh, you know, another hundred bucks for a decent microwave. And then underneath this area, we have the, uh, where is it? We have the two freezers. We've got a under counter freezer here. This is a refrigerator so that we can take some, uh, some of the foods such as the, uh, the chat sandwiches that we buy frozen. We put them in here to, uh, to thaw, you know, and, and stay cool in the fridge. And then some things like the chicken tenders and the chicken wings we have close at hand so that, you know, the staff isn't running back and forth to the, to the freezer in the back, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. These things run a couple of hundred bucks. So, you know, when you figure in the ice machine and everything, you can turn your kitchen around for three, four grand and be able to provide some food. Notice that I don't have any uh, hood system, fire extinguisher system, or anything like that here. I do have fire extinguishers, of course, you know, right here on the wall. But what I'm saying is there's no grease traps, there's no hood system, no ventilation system. And that's because we don't use any open grease, right? Um, frozen food into a convection oven, frozen food into a microwave. Um, it requires that we don't have any expensive uh, extinguisher hood or anything like that. Now, in hindsight, again, I'm leaving money on the table. I should have left more space open on the floor. Perhaps make all of this a kitchen area, right? Make this whole area, you know, uh, a kitchen. And then maybe move the bar closer out onto the floor, right? Take a couple of tables out uh, and uh, have the bar uh, closer to the floor. In hindsight, you know, maybe that would have been the better way to go because I didn't anticipate the growth of the business. You know, uh, for us, again, in improving food sales would be definitely one way to drive uh, higher revenues and, and greater overall profitability. Um, but at the beginning, uh, this was perfect based on my comfort level with food and my comfort level in terms of the build out and the money that I had to spend. Remember, I traded off simplicity for a more robust kitchen solution. When you do that, you have to start looking at having uh, more storage as you build out your menu. You have to store more product. Uh, I had to, uh, you also have to have, you know, more specialty rules, i.e. you can't just stick a, an 18 year old waitress into a kitchen on a Saturday night and expect her to cook. With my solution now, anybody in, on my staff can take uh, chicken wings, put them on a tray, stick them in an oven and turn a dial right? Uh, so it's a pretty simple, pretty easy operation. So that was the trade-off that I had made.
um, sourcing the food, so sourcing things from my menu. Everything comes from one of two places, either Restaurant Depot. If you don't have a Restaurant Depot uh, by name in your area, you probably have some sort of restaurant wholesale uh, place. I get 90% of everything I need there. Uh, we also have something called Merchant Mart. They also go by the name of Vistar, and they have pre-packaged, microwavable hamburgers, cheese steaks, barbecue chicken sandwiches, Nathan hot dogs, where you simply take them, put them in the fridge for a day, and then uh, you know they, they'll stay uh, in a fridge up to two weeks, and you can just simply microwave them. So those those work out pretty well as as well. So everything I I get. I get uh, predominantly from uh, those two locations, and uh, I do a weekly run to uh, to pick up the supplies. So that's it. That's uh, that's how you get away with doing a pretty good menu on a budget and keeping your operation simple, so that you know you can focus your time learning the bar and, and inventory control and and operational excellence around your bar, and of course focus on making sure the experience for your customers is the best. That's how we did it. Uh, hopefully you found it, uh, this video useful. If you have any questions, again, you can reach us at poolhallbusinessplan.com. I'd love to hear from you on what you think of this video, uh, what, how it aligns with maybe the plans you have for your pool hall. And then uh, uh, if you like, feel free to, uh, to drop me a few questions and we'll be happy to uh, uh, banter them around and see if we can bring some value to you in terms of uh, your kitchen prep as you look to build out your business. Again, thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.